from an existentialist perspective, what's the role for standing up to evil? So, I mean, I think Camus probably had something to say about these things because he was a, a bit of a political figure. Yeah. Like, do you have a responsibility, not just for your decisions, but you know, if the world you see around you is um, going against what you believe somewhere deep inside is ethical, do you have a responsibility to stand up to that even if it costs you your life or your well-being? Well, you ask from an existential perspective and there's lots of different sure. positions that you could have. So let me tell you something in the area of what I think I might believe, mm -hmm. which comes out of this tradition. Mm -hmm. um, and it's this, uh, if you live in a community where people are being dragged down by the norms of the community rather than elevated, then there's two things that you have to recognize. One is that you bear some responsibility for that, not necessarily because you chose it. Uh, maybe you reviled it. Maybe you were against it. But there's some way in which we all act in accordance with the norms of our culture. We all give in to them in some way or another. And if those norms are broken, then there's some way in which we've allowed ourselves to be responsible for, for broken norms. <laughs> We've become responsible for broken norms. And I, I do think you have to face up to that. I think that, um, let's just take gender norms. Maybe the gender norms are broken. Maybe the way men and women treat one another or the way men treat women is broken. You know, maybe there's, maybe it is. Maybe there's, I'm not making a substantive claim. I'm just saying, you know, lots of people say it is. And if uh, you're in a culture where uh, those norms take root, you you don't get to just isolate yourself and pull yourself out of the culture and think, I don't have any responsibility. Um, that You're already a part of the culture, even mm -hmm. if you're isolating yourself from it. That's a way of rejecting the sort of part you play in the culture, but it's not a way of getting behind it you, you now you're playing that role differently you're saying i i don't i don't i don't want to take responsibility for what's going on around me mm -hmm. and that's a way of taking responsibility by refusing to do it so i i think we're implicated in whatever whatever's going on around us and if we're going to do anything in our lives we ought to recognize that recognize that even in situations where you maybe didn't decide to do it. You you could be part of bringing other people down, and then devote yourself to trying to figure out how to act differently so that the norms up, update themselves. Uh, and I and I think this is not a, a criticism of people. I mean, Alyosha, who we mentioned in the Brothers Karamazov, he's a character. He's a kind of saintly character um, in the Brothers Karamazov. But that one crucial moment in his in in that story when he realizes how awful he's been being to someone without ever even intending to do that. Mm -hmm. It's Grushenka, who's this sort of fascinating woman, and she's a very erotic woman. She's sort of sexual. And, and, and Alyosha, in my reading of it, is kind of attracted to her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he's a young kid. He's 20 or whatever. And he's kind of embarrassed about it. And he lives in the monastery and he's thinking maybe he wants to be a priest and he's kind of embarrassed by it. So what does he do? Every time they run across one another in the street, he averts his gaze. And why is he doing that? Because he's kind of embarrassed. You know? But how does Grushenka experience it? Well, she knows she's a fallen woman and she knows that Alyosha has this other position in society. Mm -hmm. So her read on it is, he's passing judgment on me. He can see that I, he doesn't want to be associated with me. Mm -hmm. He can see that I'm a fallen woman. He knows that in order to maintain his purity, he's got to, resi he's got to avoid me. That, that's not what Alyosha intended to do, <laughs> but that's the way it's experienced. And so there's this way he comes to recognize, oh my God, like what I'm supposed to do is love people mm -hmm. in Dostoevsky's view of things. 
And what I'm doing instead is dragging this poor woman down. I'm making her life worse. I'm making her feel terrible about herself. And if I actually came to know her, I'd recognize her condition is difficult. Mm -hmm. She's living a difficult life. She's making hard choices. And why don't I, you know, why don't I see that in her face instead of this other thing that's making me want to avoid her? And that's a huge moment. So, but the idea is that we're implicated in bringing mm -hmm. other people down, whether we want to be or not. And that's our condition. So I, yeah. The requirement to understand that is to be almost to a radical degree, be empathetic and to listen uh, to the world.